There is a new generation of batteries on the horizon that can be charged from 0 to 100 in barely 5 minutes. But first things first, what's actually the issue with the current ones? At its very core, the battery technology you're seeing in phones in 2018 is actually identical to the battery tech in 1800, when batteries were first being developed. The only real improvement in the last 200 years is the material being used in batteries for energy storage. And it's pretty simple, better materials store more energy. But even though the materials have been getting better, the structure and the way the battery works has remained identical. And whilst processing power is going up 40% every single year, batteries are only improving at about 8%. They are heavy, inefficient, and not to mention very environmentally unfriendly. To give you some sort of idea, the Galaxy S9 Plus weighs 189 grams. Of that weight, about 50 grams is just the battery. And so from that, you can probably imagine how much slicker and less intrusive a phone could be if the battery could be reimagined. From what you've seen so far, it's pretty clear that batteries are just not as good as they could be right now. But why haven't they been improving? You're probably wondering, why have there not been any breakthroughs yet? How is it possible that we've been using the same tech for 200 years and nobody in this time has taken it to the next level? And what makes it all the more confusing is that the last decade has pretty much been filled with claims of revolutionary new battery technologies. But where did they all go? We're talking about batteries that could supposedly last 100 times longer. Ones that fit in your palm. Ones that charge 10 times faster. Now there are three primary reasons why none of these have come into fruition. Lithium iron, which is the current standard, was the last easy improvement to batteries. But what exactly do we mean by this? Up until this point, making a battery better has just been about using a lighter material and one that is more conductive. So for example, before lithium iron became the standard, we used to use other materials for batteries like lead, like nickel, but lithium is just lighter and can also be charged faster. Lithium is the lightest metal on the planet whilst also being very chemically active. But now that we're using the best material on the planet for cost efficiency, taking this to the next level requires a structural redesign. So clearly that's not as easy to do. Reason number two, batteries are, even today, just not that well understood. At a molecular level, no one really fully understands how introducing certain new things will affect battery performance. And therefore, working on this tech involves a lot of trial and error, which makes it not only slow, but also creates a lot of occasions where a company will create one great performing cell, only then to be unable to replicate it. Reason number three, there is much more investment in the current standard, aka lithium iron, than there is in the next standard. Whilst there are many startups and smaller companies working on the next generation of batteries, most companies still have their eyes on the current gen. Lithium iron, as it is, is the current best compromise between efficiency, capacity, and price. And this creates a vicious cycle where the majority of investments are focused on lithium iron, the current standard, rather than new materials and battery formats, the next stage. For example, Tesla just invested $5 billion in its gigafactory to build more lithium iron batteries, whereas an average company working in the next gen battery segment receives about $40 million every eight years. And amongst all this, whilst you've got these smaller companies trying to work on something new, the big three battery producers, Samsung, LG, and Panasonic, who have the majority of market share, are less interested in new chemistries and radical departures in battery technology than they are in gradual improvements to their existing products. This creates even more problems for these small innovative firms who are trying to do something new, but they're shooting for a moving target because lithium iron batteries are getting better, slowly but surely. All right, that's all well and good. There are clearly some severe complications when it comes to building the next generation of battery. But then the question is, what are we actually going to see? So all of this doesn't really leave us with a clear answer. What is the next thing and when is it coming? Well, there are a number of ongoing projects right now, but the most realistic and the one we're most likely to see first in a consumer product is graphene. It is a single layer of graphite and many describe it as a miracle material. It is 200 times stronger than steel, whilst being 100 times more conductive than copper and also 100 times lighter than aluminium. And compared to lithium iron, it can also allow five times faster charging. And it's ready. Almost. Samsung was keen to stress that it has already developed a graphene-based battery for smartphones, capable of being fully charged in 12 minutes. Many other companies like Graphene Nano also have similar solutions, batteries that leave the current lithium-ion standard in the dust. The only issue here is viability. Even though they have been a long time coming, these batteries are still 
In a proof of concept phase, they are yet to become cheap enough to commercialize and there is no telling how long this is gonna take. Personally, and this is only a rough estimate, I think five years. I think five years is a rough timeline for when we will start seeing graphene integrated in consumer tech. So phones, watches, tablets, and even cars. But as with a lot of new technologies like this, it's probably not something we're gonna see go from zero to 100. We'll probably see it to begin with integrated in some sort of format into a standard smartphone battery, maybe to extend the rate at which it could charge beyond what a lithium ion battery is capable of. And then slowly over the next few years, it'll trickle in to become a more integral part of the consumer tech experience. Anyway guys, if you did enjoy this video, I've got a couple more that I think you'll really enjoy. So I'll leave those as a card above. And also if you are new to this channel, it would mean so much to me if you could smash that subscribe button down below. With that being said, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.